telling me to be quiet, it's like uh, <laughs> putting toothpaste back in the in the tube. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be, you can talk now. It's all good now. Uh, well, we already have a packed crowd here at Jesse O Stadium all the way around, <laughs> and, and it is amazing how quiet they do get at the beginning. You're right, Jennifer. I and mean, you look around the track, and it's four and five deep fans and parents and brothers and sisters and oh this is the best and this is just the four by eight this is just getting started Wait, we got a whole lot more going on <laughs> hey reminder again here's who we've got locally in the field we've got marion local they're still in their lanes but that's going to change in a moment marion local in 1b bluffton in 2a botkins in 3b columbus grove in 5b Fort Laramie in 7A, Tenora in 7B, Minster in 8A, and Lincoln View in 9B. And Bluffton is in the lead as they skate that. Who's right behind them? Is that, that it's a C name? That looks, Columbia. Yeah, I think. Columbia. Yeah, that looks looks to me like Columbia. Now, the, the good thing about some of these teams is you've got the big B for Bodkin, so we can always identify <laughs> them. You've got the big M for Minster on their chest, so I wish more schools would do that for us. Yes, we're, we are way up high, <laughs> almost to the top at the press box here at the stadium. So so you get a closer view than what we get. They, these runners right now look a little bit like ants for us. They Andy's going to get his binoculars yep, out I'm so gonna, we can yep. see see who's who's in the lead. I'm going to get you a report as they come around the second lap of the leadoff runner here. I will give you the top, try to give you the top five or six, but they are jumbled up here, and it's really a race right now for the top four. Eden Antrim is the leadoff for Bluffton. He's also a mile runner. He does miles and everything does. He does none, none, none but miles, just miles and down, so he'll be running okay. at state as well. If so, that is if that is Eden. You Bluffton, know. Tiffin Columbian, yeah, South that Central, Mogador, uh, uh, is that Fort Loramie? Fort Loramie, yeah. you're right. Nice call, Jennifer. Yeah, those are your top four teams right now. Bluffton handing off right now to Eric Nygaard. Eric also qualified in the 3200, broke a school record from 1979 in the 3200 at uh, regionals. And he is ready to run because he is increasing that lead a tad bit. But is that the Fort Loramie run? Moving up. I don't like know it if it me. is. It's pretty far away from us. And I Somebody said, just regained the lead. Yeah, and I had, I had mistakenly called uh, McDonald Mogador, so it's McDonald. Ah. So I, I saw the M on the chest and looked at the score sheet and uh, – there's a lot of schools out there. Well, there is, and there's a lot of schools that we don't see at all exactly. until now. Um, what you can't see right now is the podium is happening with so many West Central Ohio teams making their way up their minster at the Jennifer, top. Jennifer, you're right. Fort Loramie has taken the lead. It looks like it's Tiffin Columbian and Bluffton for two and three. As Frank Rethman. Rethman is a name we've said many times when it comes to uh, running. So he's just about done with his first lap. Who'd you, who'd you say was in second? It looks like. Bluffton's dropped down to Bluffton's fourth. Bluffton's dropped down to fourth. Yeah, it looked like McDonald was in second at the time. Don't forget Bluffton, though, because Landon Armstrong still has to come, and he is a strong 800 runner. Where's Columbus Grove in all this? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for, Jennifer. Right, and Fort Lormie comes in with a seed time of 8-11, and they are going to shatter that time if they continue this pace. <laughs> And I'm looking for Grove on the uh, on the list here. They come in with a time of 8.08. They should have Trent Coke running right now. Fort Lorme um, continues. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying I'm surprised, but I'm a little surprised I, here. No, no, no. It, but, but listen, we see it every year. Strange things happen at the state track meet, and you're watching Fort Lorme just blow the field away right now. Now, we're only into two runners. And, and I need to correct myself, because they come in with the number two time in the state. So my apologies yeah. to Fort Lorme. You came in here ready to go. My eyes were on Bluffton Ottawa and Columbus Hills. Grove. Ottawa Hills is two. East Knox, three. Okay, Columbus Grove is in about the seventh position right now. Here comes Grove in here. So they're in about the seventh position. All right, so Fort Loramie has handed off their third runner, according to our list, is senior Trey Ranley. Here's who we have locally. Andrew Pullman from Marion Local, Landon Novak from Bluffton, Keaton Schnippel from Botkins, Caleb Mormon from Columbus Grove, Trey Ranley from Fort Loramie, Cole Anders for Tenora, Ryan Halpin from Minster, and Jackie Robinson. Oh, that's a cool name. That's a great name. <laughs> that is a great name. So our leader continues to be strong. Fort Lormie came out with a plan, but second place is going to be interesting because there's quite a group over there of those second place runners. Look at that Fort yeah. Lormie runner Oh, go. he looks so comfortable. Wow. I'm going to give you a two, three, and four, five runners here. So on the outside, we've got East Canton High School. We've got East Knox, it looks like. 
And don't look now, but here comes Bluffton in the fourth position. Oh, goodness, look at that. Columbus Grove is on the outside going up in the sixth position. I, I'm telling you, Jennifer, Columbus Grove and Bluffton are going to play a huge marker in this game. I'm telling you. The uh, Carson Clausen is the anchor we've got for Columbus Grove. Landon Armstrong for Bluffton. Third runners now with the second half of their race going right now. But right now, Jennifer, Fort Loramie just looks so impressive and they've not slowed down. And look at that time. We're at 520 right now. This, oh my goodness. Let's see what happens. So they finished first in the Troy Regional. They finished first in the District at Piqua. They finished first in their conference. They finished 11th at state last, last yes, year. Yes. Three of the four are back, including brothers Colton and Colin Gasson. Colton qualified in the 1600, Colin in the 800. The same foursome's also gonna run yeah. in the four by four. East Canton is right on their heels. And in the third position, uh, Ottawa Hills, I'm sorry, is in the third. Bluffton's in fourth position. Don't look now, but here comes Columbus Grove. Oh, there's Grove. Columbus Grove. Columbus Grove is in five. Columbus Grove's coming up, and that's Tenora. Tenora's moving their way up, too. Tenora's going to move up to five right past Columbus Grove. Is that Bluffton in four? Yeah, it looks like and Bluffton in four. And that's Landon Armstrong taking off. He is a solid 800 <laughs> yeah. runner. Here he goes. Fort Loramie's still in the lead, though. Fort Loramie with, <laughs> with, with a, hey, it's my first chance to talk about hair. Yes. I see the hair flying, we and I'm a, way it, over it, here. It's 1987. Yeah. We got a hair band. <laughs> Pour some sugar on me. All right. <laughs> but look at that guy fly, Colton Gasson, senior. Colin, Frank, Trey, Ranley. We got three seniors and a junior. Do you think they got a plan? I think they got a plan right now. <laughs> it's to win a state title, and they're looking real strong. Fort Lormie in one. It's East Canton in two. It's Ottawa Hills. Bluffton vying for the third position. Bluffton. Here come the Pirates on the outside. Let's go, Landon Armstrong. Look at him go. He is eyeing it. He's thinking about it. Oh, but oh, there are Jennifer, runners. There's Hold on. Columbus Grove is in the fourth position, moving up to three. And Tenora is fifth. Unbelievable. Let's see if Columbus Grove and Bluffton can't close that gap. But right now, this is Fort Loramie's race to lose. Wow. Look at Fort Loramie run. Look at that anchor make his final back stretch down there. What a way to start this race. Because all of these guys, the ones we're talking about anyway, have more races to go yeah. we're in the next two days. We're at 720 right now. There's a chance for Fort Loramie, a chance, I say, to go under eight minutes. They've got 30 seconds to go, and they're coming around the last curve. I would love to see him go under eight minutes. We're at 731. Now, where's East Canton right now? They come in with the eight-minute time. Uh, oh, take, wait a second. Uh, 740. They're great, but you got to see what Bluff is that Bluffton? That looks like is that Bluffton? Yes, that is. Yes, it's Bluffton. Oh my goodness! It's okay. Bluffton. All right, Fort Loramie. Fort Loramie is going to be your state champion. But Landon Armstrong, oh it's a fight now. Look at this! Oh my goodness! Take a look! Yay for Fort Loramie! Congratulations! Bluffton is going to get the third, third position. spot, third place in state. Ottawa Hills four. And Columbus Grove six. six. Yes. Oh, look and at these Jennifer, guys finish. Fort Lormie went under eight minutes at 7.53. 7.53. They were just off a state record of 7.48. They went 7.53. They came in with an 8.11. <laughs> I told you. I told you. Big time things happen in the state championships. Well, Fort Lormie girls play second in the 4x800. Fort Lormie boys take home the state championship. Guys, introduce yourselves. Tell us what your name is, what grade you're in. Yep, my name's Colin Gaston. I'm a senior at Fort Lormie. My name is Trey Randley, and I'm also a senior. I'm his twin. I'm Colton Gaston, senior from Fort Laramie. Uh, I'm Frank Raithman, and I'm the only junior. <laughs> so, Colton, I'll go to you. They, they said you'd be the spokesperson, so I'll ask you. A very uh, experienced group. How did that help you guys come away with the state title this year? Yeah, so I'm the only freshman runner here that went to state my freshman year. So since then, we've obviously went through the COVID pandemic, and us four have been running together for probably the last three years. Weekend, weeknights, you know, anytime we had free time together, we've just come to this real tight knit group here. And we practice, I mean, this is, we've been dreaming about this for the last year now after we got, we got third by one point in cross country last fall. So, I mean, we just been working hard and just had big dreams. How did the cross country success help you build on this success uh, today? Yeah, you know, we run against the same teams. I mean, East Canton, McDonald, they're, they're all at the top, top of their game right now. And, we just got to, we tried to figure out, you know, what can we do to better ourselves and how can we be, how can we be confident runners and strong runners and fit, get to that finish line first. Because you're a senior, you had the experience of being at Jesse O before. 
before it was moved to a different location, before COVID and everything. Uh, how did that experience help you personally? And then how did you kind of relay that to the guys who hadn't had a chance to run here yet? Right. So last year I ran the mile and I was the only one on our team that basically podiumed. And I just kind of like, you know, guys, it's it's all in that last lap. You know, you got to do it for your team, for your hometown. It's all for your heart, basically. So, <laughs> Well, heart has gotten you state title. Guys, congratulations. Well done. And good luck the rest of the time you're here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, you know the sunglasses are actually a pretty good idea. Here with the Bluffton Pirates, third place finish in the 4 by 800 meter relay. Guys, why don't you introduce yourself, tell me your name, and what grade you're in. Um, I'm Eden Antrim, and I'm a junior. Sam Durstein, I'm also a junior. Eric Nygaard, and I'm also a junior. Landon Armstrong, and I'm also a junior. So a team of juniors, and Eric, I'm going to go to you. Uh, how does it feel? You guys are juniors, but this is, and some of you guys have participated at this level before, but this is your first time at Jesse O. What, what do you think? Yeah, we were super excited coming to Jesse O last year. I think we were at Westerville, mm -hmm. and it, it just it did, the experience just wasn't the same. And I've I've never run here, but I've gone here and watched races, and it was it was super exciting when I came. So I was really excited to come in here and and see what we could do. Talk me through the race. What were what were some things that you expected to happen that went? What are some things that maybe didn't quite go according to plan? Um, we. I I'd expected our first leg to pull through with pretty good, a pretty good time and pull through in, in first or second, and that's what he did. And then I was the second leg, and I, w I was expecting to, to go around and just try to stick with as many people as possible. I knew some people were probably going to pass me, but I was just going to try to stick with them as long as I could. And then, and then I handed off to Sam for the third leg, and he, he carried through with us as well. And he did a good job holding it and pushing up a little bit as well, and then landing finished it and brought us back to third. So I'd, I'd say it was a pretty successful race, and I think we had a, I think we had a good day today. So a whole junior team, so what does that do for expectations for coming back here next year? Is, is ending up back here next year in May the, the, the standard? Is that what you guys are aiming for now? I wouldn't say it's the standard, but I think it's something that we're really looking forward to and look, really looking to, uh, to achieve and maybe go for, for a state title next year as well. Well, the future looks bright for the Bluffton Pirates, and hey, we've got the sunglasses to prove it, right? Guys, congratulations on your finish, and best of luck the rest of the time you're here.